Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from Aromatic Compounds. In this particular chapter, we will be discussing you know production of uh, aromatics as well as uh, you know utilization of those aromatics as raw material for uh, production of different types of uh, intermediate and then end chemicals. Okay? So, aromatics by name these components they have a good aroma kind of thing because of such characteristics these compounds are known as the aromatics. Usually they have a benzene kind of structure and then with other functional groups and all that. Okay? So, what are the uh, uh, main aromatics which can be used as raw materials for chemical synthesis if you list out? Primarily benzene, toluene, xylene and naphthalene. These are the important ones. There are so many types of aromatics, but these are the important aromatics out of which benzene is the most important one which can be used not only as a solvent, but also for the production of different types of uh, other chemicals. Okay? Then followed by the toluene which is also important, but from the applications point of view it is having uh, lesser application compared to the benzene. That is the reason some of the toluene that is produced by the uh, reforming processes that is also being converted into the benzene because the demand for the benzene is more. Okay? Then uh, next is the xylene and then followed by the naphthalene which are having applications in different types of resins manufacturing etc. as we are going to see subsequently. So, these are the raw materials for the production of different types of uh, synthetic chemicals. Right? But then how to produce them that is also important. Right? If you have them then only you can utilize them to produce different types of chemicals. For that purpose two important sources are there which are natural sources obviously they are nothing but the oil and coal. Okay? Let us say uh, oil you are having or you know uh, uh, crude petroleum that you are having. So, when we have studied the uh, production of ethylene, ethylene and propylene etc. by steam cracking of uh, hydrocarbons there we have seen different types of you know aromatics are also being produced. Right? Then uh, in the chapter of uh, uh, petroleum industry generalized processes of uh, reforming isomerization, hydro dealkylation etc. we have discussed. So, some of the components can be hydro dealkylized to produce uh, you know these aromatics. Okay? But if you have let us say coal Right? Then uh, let us say you need uh, coal for different purpose. Let us say for metallurgical industries you need coke like for production of metallurgical coke what you do? You do the carbonation of the coal. When you do the carbonation of the coal what happens? You know volatiles will are, would also be produced. From uh, these volatiles you know uh, when you produce actually these volatiles when you produce or when you do the carbonation of coal whatever the volatiles that you get in those you also have some amount of the tar. Right? So, this tar you can uh, remove by uh, you know electrostatic uh, uh, precipitators etc. Right? Then only it is possible to remove such kind of uh, tarry particles. Then after this whatever the volatiles are there that uh, may be still having some kind of impurity. So, then what you do you remove them by using uh, H2 so forth, so that whatever the ammonia kind of uh, uh, components are there, they would be separated. So then, after that, whatever the volatiles are there, they would be absorbed uh, in uh, uh, high boiling point oils like you know uh, creosote, etc. So that to get this benzene fractions. Okay. So whatever these uh, you know benzene fractions absorbed in this uh, high boiling uh, creosote kind of oils, they would be having you know all this benzene, toluene, xylene, and naphthalene, etc. Okay? Such kind of processes are used to produce uh, you know these aromatics from the coal. But however, whatever the aromatics that are being produced from the coal, they are less quantity only they are being produced. Majorly these aromatics are produced from the crude petroleum different types of naphtha etc. as we have already discussed some of them and then some of them we are going to discuss now. 
right. So now before going into the details of production of different types of chemicals from such aromatics, we try to discuss some basic concepts of uh, or some introduction and then applications of these uh, you know aromatics as raw materials for production of different chemicals that is what we are going to see. We are also going to see how these are being produced by uh, you know using oil and coal as a sources. Okay, we see only uh, minimum introductory concepts about them because you know they are uh, individually if you go into details they are uh, uh, you know huge uh, organic chemistry subjects. Okay? So what we have we use them and then produce different types of chemicals like you know uh, phenol etc. So those things we study in detail. Uh, thalic anhydride, thalic acid, etc. These kind of chemicals we can produce from, you know, uh, these aromatics. Those chemicals productions we do, we study in detail. Okay. Let us say aromatics from coal. If you wanted to produce coal carbonation, you have to do. When you do the coal carbonation, usually you get the coke, and then such coke is very much useful in metallurgical industries, as we have uh, discussed in one of the previous course. Uh, you know inorganic chemical technology which is also available in the NPTEL MOOCs portal, right. Volatiles from coking operations would also containing tar so they would be separated out by the electrostatic precipitators. After separating the uh, tarry particle whatever the volatiles are there they will be scrubbed with uh, dilute sulfuric acid to remove ammonia and then uh, relevant uh, components. Remaining crude benzene fraction whatever is there that would be absorbed in a high boiling stable oil such as creosote, right. So this oil has approximate composition of a 60 percent benzene, 15 percent toluene, 7 percent xylene and then 4 percent naphthalene, right. Some of the solvent naphtha would also be there that would be approximately 7 percent and then there are other components would also be there but these are the primary ones from the petroleum refinery applications point of view these are the important ones. Okay? Here you can see the aromatics that you are producing from coal you know different fractions are there but subsequently when we study aromatics production from the uh, hydrocarbons uh, or uh, petroleum crude then you know you will realize that this B, benzene, T, toluene, X, xylene they are produced almost in equivalent quantities or their yield is almost equivalent if you are producing them from you know other oil sources not from the coal. In the, from the coal you get less amount and in out of that level less amount also 60 percent is benzene. Finally this oil is fractionated to separate uh, these components. Aromatics from oil, aromatic raw materials like uh, benzene, toluene, xylene, uh, naphthalene can also be produced from petroleum by different processes something like solvent extraction of uh, distillate fractions, reforming processes by uh, fractionating the reformate. This we have already discussed in the petroleum industry chapter where we discussed about the catalytic reforming processes you know by such processes also we get aromatics. Naphtha cracking we have discussed this process when we were uh, discussing production of ethylene, ethylene, propylene by steam cracking of hydrocarbons. In that process we have also seen that uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know good amount of uh, uh, you know aromatics are also being produced. So the process is same so then this process when we discussed you know steam cracking of hydrocarbons uh, large number of products are being uh, you know produced as co-products. So then operating conditions catalyst etc you have to select such a way that you produce more of the desired component. Okay? Then other process is hydro dealkylation which also we have uh, discussed in the petroleum industry chapter. Let us say uh, you know uh, some kind of uh, alkylates you know benzene, uh, naphthalene alkylates you know alkylates in the sense you know having the alkyl functional group attached to the benzene rings or something like that. So if you do the hydro dealkylation those alkyl groups would be removed and then you may be getting the aromatics that process also we have discussed uh, in the petroleum industry chapter. Now we see synthetic chemicals and then intermediates that can be produced from aromatics. So aromatics you know we can have out of uh, aromatics benzene fraction, toluene fraction, xylene fraction, naphthalene fraction and uh, chrysalic acids as well as some metal uh, naphthanates also 
being produced from these aromatics or the fractions of aromatics, right. So, benzene can be utilized to produce styrene which is mostly used in the polymerization industry for the rubber, latex manufacturing, etc., right. So, polystyrene manufacturing, etc., some of the applications are shown here like for the tires, rubber goods, paint emulsions, paper coating, uh, shoe soles luggage, houseware, refrigeration, tiles, appliance, packaging for all these purposes styrene derived products are in general used, okay. Dodecyl benzene can also be produced from the benzene which is uh, sulfonated after being sulfonated that is used for the detergents manufacturing. Benzene can also be used to produce phenol uh, followed by the caprolactam like nylon purpose. Uh, then uh, dichlorobenzenes, DDT, BHC, malic anhydride, etc. all of them may be produced from the benzene. Coming to the toluene, uh, primarily it is used as solvent but also used to produce uh, benzoic acid. From, from benzoic acid you can produce sodium benzoate which is a very good food preservative and then uh, it is also used for the production of phenol. So, with flowchart this one we are going to discuss anyway. Dichlorotoluene also uh, you have uh, you can produce from the toluene and then tolilines can be produced from there. These tolilines are used for the production of the foam materials, okay. Xylene you have a uh, orthoxylene, metaxylene, paraxylene. Actually basically this benzene is you know we have a uh, this structure, okay and then toluene we have this structure. This circle inside uh, this uh, you know ring whatever is there that that indicates the alternative double bonds. You can write this way or you can write this way also, right. So, one double bond then alternatively another one, alternatively other one. So, either way you can write, okay. So, this is benzene, this is toluene, xylene you can have you know 2 CH3. Uh, functional groups attached. So, if it is attached at ortho position it is called as ortho xylene. If it is attached at uh, uh, meta position uh, then it is known as the uh, uh, meta xylene. If the second uh, methyl functional is attached at the para position then it is known as the para xylene. Their properties would be different from each other though chemical formula is same. Okay, only that position of second CH3 group is changing from one to the other. Okay. So, this orthoxylene may be used for thalic anhydride which we are going to discuss how to produce. Similarly, metaxylene is used for the isothalic acids uh, and then uh, paraxylene used for the tartalic acid which is also we are going to discuss you know in detail with flowchart how to produce them. These are primarily used for the alkyds, plasticizers, polyesters purpose in general as shown here. Naphthalene is used uh, uh, for thalic anhydride, uh, naphthol intermediates and insect repellent manufacturing purpose these are used. Uh, chrysalic acid is used for the resins. Uh, plasticizer, disin disinfectant manufacturing purpose, etc. These are used. Now, you can see so many applications are there. Only a few of them are shown. In fact, there are more number of applications possible from these chemicals also, right. So, but we have seen a most important one. So, now what we do? We are going to discuss the production of benzene followed by the production of different types of chemicals from aromatics in this lecture and then coming couple of lectures. However, before going into the details of uh, you know production of uh, these aromatics and then their derived intermediate and end chemicals, we will have a brief introduction about these uh, aromatics. Introduction in the sense you know some applications point of view, where are they being used those kind of details we are going to see. So, let us start with benzene which is nothing but C6H6 cyclic component. It is counted ahead of toluene, xylene. Naphthalene in terms of priority because of wide range of applications. From the applications point of view, benzene is having the most applications as we have already seen in the previous slide also, right. Actually, uh, you know from the coal whatever the uh, aromatics are produced, there 60 percent benzene is there. 
right? Whereas the uh, toluene is 15 percent only, right? And then xylene is only uh, 7 percent, right? Whereas if you produce these aromatics from the oil, so then approximately you know you get uh, you know equal fractions, approximately 30 percent, 30 to 35 percent like that. Okay. So, they are producing equal fractions if you are producing from the oil, right. But however, from the applications point of view, benzene is having most applications compared to the toluene followed by the least applications by xylene. Small amount of uh, benzene is used as solvent, whereas the major usage of it is for the production of phenol and styrene, both of these components we are going to See, phenol is produced by so many number of methods, but six important processes are there. So, all those six processes we are going to discuss in detail with flowchart how the phenol is being produced industrially. Similarly, styrene production also we are going to see in the one of the lectures of this particular chapter. 40 percent of benzene is almost equally used for the production of a different types of chemicals like aniline, sulfonated detergents, DDT, malic anhydride, chlorobenzene and cyclohexane. Okay? Cyclohexane is produced from petroleum by two routes, one is the catalytic hydrogenation of benzene and then direct fractionation of reforming stocks. This cyclohexane is one of the important intermediate in synthetic fiber preparation. Coming to the toluene. It is produced in about equal yields to that of benzene if it is produced from the uh, petroleum oil uh, uh, sources and uh, it is also equal in yields compared to the xylene okay? if it is produced in petroleum refining operations. If it is produced from the coal then it is less compared to the benzene, much less in fact. However, use of toluene is not as prevalent as for benzene. So many applications benzene is having, but toluene is having less number of applications. In fact, toluene was uh, you know initially produced to uh, have it as a kind of blend in high octane uh, motor fuels, pet motor petrol, etc. But later on that you know uh, paradigm shift towards the production of different chemicals. Nowadays, it is not used much in the you know motor fuels as well. Okay? So, some of the applications of toluene include it is used as solvents in paints industries, rubber, plastic, cements, etc. Also used for production of different types of chemicals like uh, benzoyl chloride and its peroxide for polymerization catalyst, benzoyl chloride and their peroxides in general used as catalyst for the so many polymerization processes as we are going to discuss it in the next chapter of the course. It is also used for the pro, uh, preparation of benzoic acid as plasticizer, it is also used to produce phenol from the benzoic acid, this process we are going to see. From the toluene first you prepare the benzoic acid, benzoic acid is again uh, you know converted into the phenol. So, that process also we are going to see in detail, toluene diisocyanate. Uh, is also one of the chemical that can be produced by using toluene and then this chemical is used in the polyurethane foams production. It is also used, toluene is also used in the detergents manufacturing purpose, but once you do the sulfonation or the toluene sulfonates you take and then use them in the detergents manufacturing. Toluene production quantity is large that EBO uses cannot be sufficient to utilize all toluene. So, whatever that toluene so much it is produced, but applications point of view only fewer applications are there. So, despite of having large quantities you do not have a, a utility. So, then what you do in general you either use it as a uh, you know additive in the uh, high octane motor uh, petrol or convert into the uh, you know so called benzene and then that benzene you use for different types of applications because benzene is having much more applications compared to the toluene. So, some other utilization plans are blending in motor petrol to upgrade high octane number, right? This produces low income yield as a fuel value. It can also be used for the production of phenol, which is also having so many applications, especially in the resins manufacturing. So, phenol you produce, so then you find the market. Dealkylation with hydrogen you do then you produce benzene 
in fact this process we are going to discuss now anyway with flowchart. So this benzene when you are having, so benzene is having so many applications. So that way the toluene can also be utilized or excess of the toluene that is being produced from the oil fractions that can be uh, converted into the benzene and then utilized. Sources of toluene, 87 percent of total toluene that is available in the world is from catalytic reforming of refinery streams, right? Only 7 percent is coming from the coal, okay? 9 percent is separated from pyrolysis of gasoline produced in steam crackers during manufacturing of ethylene and propylene. 2 percent recovered as a byproduct from styrene manufacture, 1 to 2 percent from separation from coal tar. These numbers are not like you know from those uh, you know processes, respective processes. This, these are based on the total whatever the toluene that is available uh, that is produced industrially either from the coal or oil. If you make that uh, fractionation, 87 percent of the total toluene that is available that is obtained by the catalytic reforming of refinery streams. Okay. Only 1 to 2 percent of toluene that is available is obtained by separation from coal tar while you know when you do the you know coal carbonation process. Next aromatic is xylene right which is C6, H4, CH3 2 right. So, it is produced in almost equal yields as that of toluene from petroleum reforming. So, all B, T, X are produced in almost equal yields if these are being produced from the petroleum reforming processes. Around 60 percent of it is used as low value high octane blending fuel like toluene. Remaining important high value usages of uh, xylene include as solvents especially in high boiling type largely for uh, alkyd resins uh, purpose you know largely in production of alkyd resins these are used as solvents. Xylene is also used for the production of different types of chemicals. Let us say if you have ortho xylene which is nothing but the second CH3 group attached to the ortho position of the ring. So, that can be used for the production of thalic anhydride and acid competitive with naphthalene oxidation. Let us say if you have a, a meta xylene that is second uh, methyl functional is attached at the meta position of the ring then that can be used for the isothalic acid production which is competitive with thalic acid for reinforced plastics and plasticizers. Let us say if you have a para xylene that is a, a second a methyl functional is attached at the para position of the ring like this then it is used for dimethyl terphthalate used in polyester fibers and films. See you know uh, they are slightly different but uh, applications also slightly different but overall finally they are being used for the polyester fibers, films etc. for those purpose these are being uh, used for the plasticizers, plastics manufacturing purpose these are used. Fourth one is the naphthalene which is having the structure like two benzene rings attached like this. So, when it is attached like this, so here what you have? You have only uh, 8 uh, H atoms and then 10 carbon atoms, okay? So, these are the C6H6, uh, C7, C8, C9, C10 and then uh, only uh, two more hydrogen atoms can be accommodated here because of the double bonds, alternative double bonds. Okay, that is the reason it is C10H8. 80 percent of naphthalene obtained from coal uh, used for production of thalic anhydride. Main market for thalic derivatives are in alkyd resins and plasticizers. Less than 10 percent of it used for dye stuff and exports purpose. In case naphthalene from coal is insufficient to meet demand, hydro dealkylation of petroleum can also be done to obtain the naphthalene and then that can be utilized. Now, we start a discussion on benzene production by hydro dealkylation. Benzene can be produced by a method of converting toluene and dialkyl benzene. Let us say toluene is nothing but this particular function. You have CH3 here, right? Now, if you react with hydrogen, dealkylation would be taking place. Dealkylation in the sense removing the alkyl group and then you will be having the benzene like this. 
right. So, sometimes you may be having you know uh, more than one let us say two functionals are there methyl functional. So, then uh, hydro dialkylation should be done. So, then here again this alkyl you know uh, groups whatever the methyl functional groups are there they would be remo removed by the you know uh, hydrogenation reaction. So, that is the reason it is known as hydro dealkylation and then you get the benzene as well. We have already seen at the uh, beginning of petroleum industry chapter that breaking of the bonds the CH3 functional groups etc easy compared to breaking of any of the bonds that are you know uh, making the formation of uh, uh, rings like this. So, this is very difficult this is very easy that is the reason you know dealkylation can be done uh, easily to get the benzene from the benzene getting you know uh, cyclohexane you know is a bit tough ok. Naphthene can be manufactured by alkyl naphthalenes by same process let us say naphthenes what structure we have we have this structure two benzene rings are attached like this and they will be having C10 H8 form let us say if it is having uh, CH3 then C10 H7 CH3 would be there. This also if you do the uh, hydrogenation so dealkylation will take place and then you can get the naphthalene like this right the process is same ok. Chemical reactions let us say C6H5 CH3 reacts with hydrogen then you get uh, benzene and then methane as just now I have written a reaction. Likewise let us say if you have xylene also or dialkyl uh, benzene also if you are having like this two uh, functional groups two methyl functional groups are there then you react with two hydrogen atoms. So, then what you get you get the benzene ring plus two uh, moles of methane. So, this is also possible ok. Let us say if you have a alkyl naphthene like this let us say now C 10 H 8 minus X CH 3 X if X is 1. So, then C 10 H 7 CH 3 as I have written like this and then you react with 1 mole of uh, uh, you know a hydrogen to get uh, you know so called 1 mole of uh, an acetylene plus 1 mole of a uh, methane. If you have a uh, 2 uh, if X is 2 then this is C 10 H 6 CH 3 twice plus 2 moles of H 2 giving rise to C 10 H 8 and then 2 moles of methane ok. Competitive processes both uh, catalytic and non catalytic processes are existing. In fact, uh, initially catalytic processes were developed, but however, you know in order to overcome the uh, royalty payment issues with the patented processes people subsequently developed non catalytic processes also yield is same or on the uh, yield is approximately same by either of the process whether catalytic or non catalytic. Only thing that in the catalytic process temperature you may be using 600 to 650 degree centigrade and then 30 to 40 atmosphere whereas in the catalytic process you may be using you know 800 to 850 degree centigrade and then pressure 60 to 70 atmosphere like that. Obviously, the purpose of uh, having catalyst is to reduce the severity of the conditions required for the reaction to undergo. Catalytic processes run at lower temperature and pressure than non-catalytic thermal processes. Flow sheet for both types of processes are same except for the reactor and processing condition that we are going to see with flow chart here. Now, here we have a process to production of a benzene by hydro dealkylation, right. So, what you do here? you take uh, make up uh, H2 or the fresh H2 you take and then you mix with the recycle gas, compress them, then you mix with the liquid alkyl aromatic feed. So, this mixture whatever is there compressed gases and liquid mixture whatever uh, are there they would be pre-treated using the heat exchanger or preheated using the heat exchanger then further uh, preheating would be done uh, by using the fired preheater like that. Fired preheater in the sense for the uh, preheating purpose whatever the energy is there that would be obtained by the firing the fuel. 
So, once preheating uh, this mixture, the reactant mixture is going to the reactor, okay, right. So, here this reactor if it is a catalytic process, then you may be having tubular uh, reactor within the shell of the reactor as a bundle as we have already discussed different types of uh, tubular packed bed reactors and then temperature you may be using you know uh, so called uh, uh, lower temperature or moderate temperature of 600 to 650 degree centigrade and then pressures of uh, 35 to 40 atmospheres. If you are having a non catalytic process then you will, you will be having simply tubular reactor operating at 800 to 850 degrees centigrade and then 60 to 70 atmospheres of pressure, okay. Then after the reaction whatever the product mixture is there that would be uh, preheated again using the heat exchanger, then again cooled using the condenser. After that it will be passed through a high pressure uh, stage. where uh, liquids and gases are being separated, right. These uh, gases, most of the gases are used for the recycle purpose. Some fraction are also taken to separate H2 from the methane or H2 methane separation so that that H2 can be reused to, for the hydrodealkylation uh, reaction or it can also be used as the fuel. Whatever the uh, liquid fractions are there, they would be taken to a gas stripper so that if any lighter gases fractions are there, they would also be uh, removed from the uh, liquid by the gas stripping and then they will be, those gases would be collected as a fuel, right. So, after separation of the uh, traces of gases from the liquid sample, whatever the liquid is there that would be primarily, you know. Uh, benzene and crude benzene, right. So, that would be taken to a fractionator where the temperature pressure you maintain such a way that uh, more volatile benzene you can get it as a top product. Some of the benzene may also be recycling until the required uh, purification of benzene is being done. Whereas, the bottom should be heavy ends collected as a heavy ends which are primarily alkyl aromatics either they can be collected as a purge or they would be recycled back to the reactor so that further dealkylation can be taken place to produce more benzene, right. So, here whether you take the catalytic process or non-catalytic process, whatever the reactor effluents would be there, they would be at such high temperatures of corresponding processes. If you are doing, you know, catalytic process then 600 to 650 degree centigrade uh, they would be carrying. Right. If you are doing non-catalytic process, so those F reactor effluents would be at uh, 800 to 850 degree centigrade. So, this energy may be uh, recovered and then may be used for the uh, stripper and then uh, reboiler of a fractionating column. That is important from the, you know, uh, heat economy point of view and then in fact that is done in most of the processes wherever there is a uh, reactor effluent is having lot of energy. Process description, hydrogen rich makeup gas and recycled gas are compressed and mixed with liquid alkyl aromatic feedstock and recycled. Prior to charging feed to the reactor, combined feed is preheated by heat exchange with reactor effluent and then in a fired preheater. Reactor contains either a fixed bed catalyst for catalytic processes or is tubular bed for non-catalytic process. Effluent of the reactor is cooled via reactor feed preheater then with water and separated in a high pressure stage to gas liquid fractions. Major portion of gas is recycled, the balance going to the methane separation unit for a H2 enrichment and makeup or it may also be used for a fuel purpose. Liquid fraction is stripped of residual gas at low pressures, then fractionated to produce high purity benzene and then recycle alkyl aromatics. Yield is usually 95 to 98 percent for toluene conversion whereas 90 to 95 percent for naphthalene conversion. The process is same, right. If you are taking alkyl uh, naphthenes to produce naphthalenes, then you know process is same but the yield would be slightly less let us say if you are comparing with the benzene production from the toluene. Major engineering problems obviously reactor design. 
because of uh, different types of processes that is uh, non catalytic and catalytic process and then wherever there is a hydrogen so the problem associated with the hydrogen especially explosion proof uh, reactors or you know MOC of the reactor such a way that that should not undergo embrittlement etc such kind of problems would always be there okay reactor design first patented uh, catalytic processes were developed for production of benzene from alkyl benzenes or alkyl aromatics which were operating at 600 to 650 degrees centigrade and 35 to 40 atmosphere however to circumvent the patent royalty uh, payment issues thermal hydrogenation processes were developed which were operating at 800 to 850 degrees centigrade and 60 to 70 atmospheres however yields whether you do the catalytic process or non catalytic process they are comparable uh, by both processes economic balance in the reactor design include residence time temperature and recycle rates one has to consider as well as pressure throughput capacity and vessel cost are the other category so these in, within these two category one has to see the economic balance accordingly one has to select the residence time temperature and then recycle rates or pressure throughput and vessel cost coming to the hydrogen problems ample uh, hydrogen available from reformers methane composition of uh, charge gas and purge rates are fixed by the reactor kinetics hydrogen handling requires explosion proof plant construction as it is very explosive use of hydrogen in equipment at high temperature high pressure dictates chrome steel for equipment construction so that to avoid embrittlement okay so that is about the uh, production of benzene by hydro dealkylation of alkyl aromatics okay so we have seen the flow chart as well as the engineering problems now we discuss the production of phenol c6h5oh right first we see uh, pertinent properties molecular weight is 94.11 melting point is 42 degree centigrade boiling point is 181.4 degree centigrade density at 25 degree centigrade is 1.07 gram per cc grades 98 to 99 percent purity as cp or usp solid or 80 to 92 percent phenol in aqueous commercial solutions are two different grades are available applications uh, of phenol if you see largely it is used in plastic industry for production of a thermosetting resins like phenol formaldehyde resins these are very much used uh, you know in several of the applications where phenol and then formaldehyde react to give you know different types of resin thermoplastics or thermosettings both are possible okay these resins are used in industrial and decorative uh, laminates molding powders for electrical appliance plywood and particle board abrasive foundry molds textile auxiliaries and for varnishes also these phenol formaldehyde resins are used acetone and phenol are condensed in the presence of catalyst to produce bisphenol a which is used in the manufacture of epoxy resins polycarbonate resins polyester resins rubber chemicals and fungicides it is chemical intermediate for herbicides insecticides pharmaceuticals and dye stuffs as well coming to the methods of production of phenol only 15 percent of uh, available phenol is obtained as natural phenol by coal carbonation process or coal carbonation plants whereas the remaining is coming from the synthetic processes like you know by uh, you know reforming of the petroleum uh, crudes several processes for synthetic phenol are available and six of which are still competitive these are nothing but cumin peroxidation hydrolysis process Tolvin two stage oxidation process, rashing process which is also known as the vapor phase hydrochlorination and hydrolysis process, chlorobenzene caustic hydrolysis process, benzene sulfonate caustic fusion and then benzene direct oxidation process. So out of these six process, this process we will be discussing in today's lecture whereas the remaining five methods to produce phenol will be discussed in the next lecture. Okay? So, let us start discussion on phenol production by cumin peroxidation and hydrolysis process. 
chemical reaction first whatever the uh, cumin is there that will undergo peroxidation reaction. Cumin or isopropyl benzene will react with air to give the cumin hydroperoxide. This cumin hydroperoxide will undergo hydrolysis reaction using sulfuric acid to give the phenol and then acetone co-product. We have already discussed you know production of uh, cumin in the previous lecture. There we discussed that cumin is primarily utilized for the production of phenol in which acetone would be obtained as a co-product. So, in the previous chapter we have discussed the cumin production. Now, in this chapter we are using the cumin to produce phenol and then acetone. Quantitative requirements to produce 1 ton of phenol 92 percent yield uh, with uh, 0 0.6 ton of uh, acetone how much cumin you required 1.4 tons whereas air 1.53 tons required. This cumin hydroperoxidation reaction takes place in the presence of emulsifying agents. So, some quantity of it is required whereas the hydrolysis of a cumin hydroperoxide will take place in the presence of sulfuric acid. So, some quantity of a sulfuric acid is also required. Co-product is acetone, plant capacity is usually 50 to 125 tons per day. Now, we discuss the flow chart uh, for the production of phenol from the cumin. In this flow chart, we can see that cumin is being uh, mixed with the cumin and methyl styrene recycle stream, but this methyl styrene and cumin recycle stream whatever is there that is first hydrogenated using hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst at approximately 100 degree centigrade. The purpose of this mild hydrogenation of a methyl styrene and then uh, recycle uh, cumin recycle stream is to make whatever the unsaturates or whatever the alpha methyl styrene is there the, those things would be made saturated and then mixed with the cumin and then sent to the oxidizer along with the air. Okay? So, when these are being sent to the oxidizer, to the oxidizer what we do? We add aqueous emulsifying agent or emulsifier will be uh, added which is stabilized by alkali like you know sodium carbonate. having pH 8.5 to 10.5, right? So, that this oxidation of a uh, cumin takes place and then you get the cumin hydroperoxide, okay? After the reaction, uh, what happens? You know, whatever the gases are there, they would be condensed and then if at all any hydrocarbons are there, they would be recycled back to the reactor whereas the after recovering the hydrocarbons, vent gases are taken off. From the bottom of the oxidizer what you get? You get primarily cumin hydroperoxide along with the unreacted cumin etc. or uh, some amount of methylstyrene etc. may be there. So, that would be taken to cleavage tank where weak H2SO4 having 10 to 25 percent H2SO4 is utilized to do the hydrolysis of uh, uh, this cumin hydroperoxide so that you get the so called you know phenol plus acetone but also some alpha methyl uh, styrene would also be there plus unreacted cumin etc. would also be there. So, all this mixture you get after the hydrolysis reaction. This mixture now passed through a separator here. What it does? It does, it separates the uh, aqueous heavier phase at the bottom and then that is primarily containing the H2SO4, dilute H2SO4 that would be recycled back to the cleavage uh, tank, right? Whereas the top organic phase whatever is there that would be having the crude phenol acetone and then some impurities that would be taken to a wash tower where 
you know mixture is uh, washed with water so that to remove if at all any traces of acid still present in the mixture. Okay. After removing the acid crude phenol is taken to a distillation column where highly volatile acetone is collected as a top product. Some of the top product after condensation is also being uh, reflexed back to the distillation column to improve the purity of acetone. Right? After removal of this one whatever the uh, bottom product is there that would be crude phenol along with uh, cumin unreacted cumin plus uh, um, methyl styrene etc. this kind of products would be there. But what happens this mixture if you heat it they will be decomposing. So, for that reason you will be using vacuum fractionators, 3 vacuum fractionators would be utilized. In the first vacuum fractionator you separate cumin as a top product and then you pass it through the hydro uh, treatment uh, reactor to make it uh, you know saturated and then mixed with the cumin and then sent to the reactor. Whatever the bottoms of the first vacuum fractionator would be there, they would be taken to the second vacuum fractionator where methyl styrene would be collected as the top product and then that would be you know mixed with the uh, cumin recycle and then uh, that uh, recycle stream is sent to the hydrogenator. After uh, saturating this uh, recycle stream that would be mixed with the cumin and then sent to the oxidizer. Whereas the bottoms from the second vacuum fractionator whatever are there that would be primarily having the uh, phenol with a little amount of acetophenone. So, that acetophenone is collected from the bottom as a heavier product whereas from the top you will be getting a, a phenol as a product. That phenol may be further purified by passing through a crystallizer to get the pure phenol of high grade high purity. Okay. Process description, cumin or isopropyl benzene which is manufactured by alkylation of benzene with propylene that we have already discussed in one of the previous lecture is mixed with a recycled cumin in 1, one to 4 ratio. This mixture is sent to hydrogenator in order to avoid undesirable decomposition of peroxide during the oxidation step. Unsaturates and then alpha methyl styrene are converted to the saturated uh, materials in this hydrogenator. For this purpose, hydrogen over nickel catalyst at 100 degree centigrade in a batch reactor used. Okay. Oxidation is carried out using air in an aqueous emulsion stabilized by alkali such as sodium carbonate of pH 8.5 to 10.5. Vent gases are passed through a condenser to recover hydrocarbons. Thus formed cumin peroxide is cleaved in an acidifier which is nothing but agitated vessel at 55 to 65 degree centigrade using 10 to 25 percent dilute sulfuric acid solution. Reaction products are separated into the aqueous acid layer for recycle to cleavage vessel and then oil top layer containing 76 percent cumin, 14 percent phenol, 8 percent acetone and 1 to 2 percent of alpha methyl styrene and acetophenol. This mixture is separated in a series of 4 distillation steps, the last 3 of which are under vacuum. Phenol in the overhead of last vacuum fractionator is further purified by crystallization as we have seen in the flowchart. Coming to the major engineering problems or alternatives, gas with a two phase liquid contact is one of the important problem. Intimate dispersion of air bubbles with emulsified hydrocarbon water mixture is important because such dispersion does not form easily. If you have this one, what are the advantages? You can attain good conversion, losses of hydrocarbons in the vent gases would be low and then would be under the explosive limit control as well. Other engineering problem is the peroxide handling to avoid explosions. Actually this cumin peroxide if you uh, accumulate in large quantities that may lead to the explosions. So, you should have a provision that to remove the cumin peroxide as much as possible from the vessels or uh, equipments and then subsequently continuously keep passing rather storing it. Cumin hydroperoxide is explosive when allowed to accumulate. Thus, design must be such that to avoid trapping condensed liquid in large amounts. That is all about the production of phenol 
from the cumin by its uh, oxidation or hydroperoxidation followed by the hydrolysis of a uh, cumin hydroperoxide to produce phenol and acetone coproducts. Right? References for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.